I don't know about you, but when I can find a way of creating two cards at the same time, then it's a win-win for me. Today's video is just that, and what's more is part of a blog hop between WoW Embossing Powder and Newton's Nook. So stay tuned for more details on this later on in the video. I'm Verity and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, why not think about subscribing so you don't miss out on my next video. For these two cards today, I'm using the Peony Blooms stamp and the Serene Stripes stencil from Newton's Nook. So I've put a piece of hot press watercolour cardstock into my Misty and I've positioned all the blooms and leaves I can onto the panel. The embossing powder I'm going to be using is Violet Pearl Powder from WOW. Now, pearl powders show up best on dark colours. So this pearl powder over the white paper won't really show when you heat set it and there won't be much of a colour change. So to get around this when you, you're heating embossing pearl on watercolour paper, you first of all have to stamp the design in a dark colour. So I'm using a black pigment ink here. Once you've stamped it, remove the card from the Misty and then cover the image with the Violet Pearl Embossing Powder. If you don't have black pigment ink, don't worry, you can use black dye ink, but then just stamp over the top of the black dye ink with your clear ultra slow dry embossing ink from WOW. That will allow you to then add the powder and it will adhere to that. So make sure you've heated up your dual speed heat gun before you bring it to the paper to melt your powder. This will help reduce any warping. And then this is when the magic happens and that white powder for the white pile goes from that white melting into the violet colour over the dark colour lines. This violet colour is stunning and it's one of my favourite pearl and bark colours from WOW. I repeated stamping and heat embossing the blooms and leaves as I needed quite a few for this technique. For the colouring, I'm using my Alta New Watercolour 36 pan set and to allow the violet pearl to shine through, I'm keeping the colouring of the flowers quite monotone and instead just using jet black and moon rock colours to shade the blooms and colour the leaves in. Now I'm not an expert watercolourist, but for me, I start off with a light wash over the pestle and then I'll move on to another pestle further away from that initial pestle to add another light wash over that pestle. Then this allows me to go back to the first pestle because it will have dried and add more colour to it. So when I'm adding this colour, it's not bleeding into the other pestle or bleeding and fading into itself. So I'm going back to the first petal, starting to add more colour to the shaded areas to start building up depth and dimension. Going back and forth between the petals, as I say, allows the layers of the colour to dry in between, allowing you to build up the colour and definition without your colours bleeding out and fading into a flat colour and a flat flower. So I've sped up the video so you can see how I've coloured this one flower and I'll be back after this flower is finished.
once all the flowers were coloured in, I then used a pair of scissors to fussy cut out the blooms and leaves. Now this set does have a coordinating die set from Newton's Nook and that can speed it up for you. I just didn't have those dies to hand when creating this card, but I quite enjoy cutting them out whilst I was watching the programme. After these were cut out, I wanted to create a panel of these die cuts to cut out from. So I'm arranging these over a card panel so I can get the proportion of this makeshift die panel correct. I did find that I fiddled quite a bit with the die cut pieces, determining what kind of layout I liked. And then for the next part, I needed to make sure the back of these die cuts were taped together. So here in the UK, we don't have this glad press and seal that you do over in America when people use it. So instead, what I did was just place another piece of card over the top, sandwiching the die cuts between the cards, and then I just flipped it over. So then once I removed the top card, I was left with the back sides of the die cuts. To keep my die cuts together whilst I'm running it through my machine, I'm just using some washi tape to skewer them together. And then I run this through my die cutting machine with a rectangle die. So to actually keep all the die pieces together on the card, I'm just using liquid glue to add small dabs of the glue onto the backs of the die cuts where they overlap so they just adhere together. Not only am I doing this with that die cut rectangle, but I'm also doing it for the frame that's left over because I can use this to create the second card. As I say, creating two cards from one technique is a win-win for me. For the backgrounds, I'm using the Serene Stripes stencil to dry emboss a piece of edible eggplant cardstock from Gina K Designs. You will need to use a rubber embossing mat with your die cut sandwich when you are dry embossing. But I would suggest, because all machines can vary slightly, refer to your die cutting machine to make sure you've got the correct sandwich for dry embossing. This will give a lovely subtle texture and interest to that background, but it doesn't really detract from your colouring and your heat embossing. So for the second card, I'm using the stencil in the more normal way it's intended for, so the traditional way. I'm using some blending brushes to apply Royal Treatment Ink by Catherine Pooler to the background to create a lovely soft background that sits within that die cut frame. I find it useful though to, whilst blending, to keep um, moving the frame over, positioning it over the top just to check that I've got the stencil design covering the whole negative area within the frame. To assemble the cards, each die cut panel was foam mounted onto the corresponding backgrounds and then the backgrounds would adhere to white card bases. A couple of the sentiments from the Peony Bloom stamp set was heat embossed in opaque bright white while embossing powder onto black card and these were added to each card retrospectively. And then to finish these cards, I just added a few liquid mercury Nouveau crystal drops. As I mentioned, this is part of a blog hop between Wow Embossing Powder and Newton's Nook, which is taking place over five days. So five days full of inspiration, which is great. If you're watching this on my YouTube channel, make sure you head over to my blog as well as the Wow blog, so you can leave a comment over the five days on every design team member's blog. One lucky commenter will be chosen and announced on the Wow blog on the 1st of October, where they will win a six pack of embossing powders. What's more, there's even more chances to win, because if you head over to Newton's Nook blog, if you do the same with all of their design team's uh, blogs, you could also win a gift card from Newton's Nook. This was produced as part of my design team work for Wild Embossing Powders, and links are listed below. I'm sent some goodies to use as part of my work, but I do truly love Wild Embossing Powders. For 10% discount at their shop, just enter the code you can see on screen. So if you're not a subscriber of mine already, why not think about clicking that button below along with that bell icon so you can be notified when my next video is up. Also check out this other video for more inspiration, give this video a thumbs up and share this with your crafty friends. Until next time, happy crafting!